Project 6 solar charger. We will use this circuit and we can set the voltage meter to either the 0.5 MA setting or 50 MA setting. I am going to switch it to the 50 MA setting and then I will hold the circuit up to this incandescent lamp. And look how high the meter is when the solar cell is exposed to light. It can, re it can go beyond 5 volts. And the battery, if I remember correctly, is rated at, I think, 3.6 volts. But the meter can go can read higher, and you can use this circuit to charge the battery if you leave it either in under an incandescent lamp of at least 60 watts or outside in sunlight. Even though it's sunny outside now, because it's still morning, the sun does not reach directly into my room, so there may not be enough. And plus, it's easier since my phone is plugged in here, and. It takes a couple hours to charge the battery, but you can't overcharge it by leaving the circuit exposed to light. This circuit is very similar to Project 3 in which I built several different circuits to charge the battery. Project 7, Solar Charger 5MA. We'll modify the previous circuit so that the parts are arranged like this. And you'll need uh, a few additional snap wires to complete it. And it should look like this. We will set the meter to the 0 0.5 MA setting, the left setting. And then place the circuit up to this lamp and see what happens. Right now, it doesn't seem to get too much light. But you can try different light sources, whether artificial or natural. This circuit uses a resistor in the pivot stand to change the 0.5 MA scale on the meter to a 5 MA scale. So read the current on the 0 to 5 scale. And so... Yep, that's volts and then uh, 0 0.5 MA or 50 MA, depending on the setting. Project 8, windmill. This circuit is pretty simple. We just need the voltage meter and the motor mounted on the pivot stand with the fan. And we will adjust the motor so that it's in a horizontal and upright position and the meter will be on the 5 volt setting, the very left setting. And then I will, we will either blow on or spin the motor. It'll be easier to spin the motor and watch the voltage. As I spin the motor, the voltage changes. I am actually producing electricity by spinning the fan on the motor and this resembles a real life windmill that is often used to produce energy. Windmills were first used thousands of years ago to grind corn or produce mechanical energy for running machinery but nowadays they're often used for generating power and oftentimes you can find dozens of turbines on special farms that can produce large quantities of energy for thousands of homes and businesses. When I spin the motor, another type of energy, magnetism, converts the mechanical energy from the spinning motor into electricity, which will then power the meter. As I hinted when I demonstrated the hand crank earlier in the last video. Project 9. Windy Lights. 
we will build this circuit and we have the two LEDs. We also have the motor with the fan mounted on the pivot stand and we will have the meter set to the 5 volt setting and we will either blow on the windmill or spin it and what it's supposed to do is provide produce energy while being spun. Now it's probably recommended that you use an electric fan or something which I don't really have right now but you that can provide a continuous wind to keep the motor going but then while the motor is spinning you will hold down the press switch and see if the yellow LED lights up. Alternatively you can turn on the slide switch and see whether the second LED comes on and you can also observe the change in current. The meter does seem to increase as I spin the motor but there's not enough current to power the LEDs. Also if you were to turn them turn on either of the switches the current will decrease a little but not as much as with the solar cell circuits.